Welcome to Not Quite Therapy. We're with Colleen Nye, the author of both Immersion and When in Maui. And she's going to tell us a little bit about When in Maui. Okay. Um, when in Maui is what I reference as um, a dual, completely unattainable love story. You watch two best friends uh, find their own love uh love lives uh but one runs to love and one runs from it and as a book blurb says alice tyler's world when vacation in maui was supposed to be a great time with friends and escape from all things stressful instead she found herself right in the middle of stress and without her best friend vivian cook that stress it went to the name went by the name of ryan perry he not only adds to Alice's high-pressure life, but terrifies her by falling for her while on the island. Ryan then enlists Vivian to help him convince her, her friend, that fears can be overcome and a happily ever after can exist. But can Alice clear those emotional hurdles before losing Ryan forever? And what happens when the tables are turned? Can Vivian find her own Prince Charming and the fairy tale ending she dreams of? Though uh, through hilarious situations and side-splitting adventures, the two women lean on each other in a journey of self-discovery, only to find their true selves are not at all who they thought themselves to be. And can you tell us some about uh, Immersion? Immersion is a tech thriller, so I went a completely different angle um, with that one. Uh, I read more sci-fi tech thriller type books. Um, and immersion is uh, about a it's about a life that is not too far um, unlike what our world is like now with the economy being kind of teetering back and forth except for theirs is a bit more on the downside and in the meanwhile a company produces a virtual gaming device and uh, it allows people to escape their uh, dreary lives as they may feel and what has happened is they've covered up that the device can actually kill people and so now you've got a small group of um, friends and whatnot that are out to take down the company and stop the devices and bring people back very cool, very cool. okay so um, who is your greatest influence Um, I would have to say everyone. I, I derive a lot of my inspiration for writing in my stories from just the world around me and I, the things I watch people go through. So, yeah, I'd, I'd have to say the world as a whole. And what goal do you have for the future or goals? Um, I want to keep writing. Uh, I'd love to have an actual um, regular spot in some either magazines or newspapers where I can do uh, short stories or um, interest pieces and then just continue to put out more and more books because I love to write. I love to take my stories out to the public. So Great. Uh, when did you realize <clears throat> you had to be a writer? When I was a kid. I actually still have short stories I wrote um, for class assignments when they were like, here, write a paragraph or two. I'd write like little mini books. <laughs> and um, I started winning awards as a teenager, so I kind of always knew that it was something I would want to, I'd want to keep pursuing, so. And where is your favorite place to write? Well, oh, it varies. I have my back living room that is very secluded that I can put on whatever music I'm listening to and and just really work but I do love to switch it up and go sit in the living room where my kids are running around being frantic and doing whatever they're doing and that chaos and, and all the way to uh, I have written a fair amount of both books sitting in a public spot like a Denny's or a cafe or a bar even and just sit there because I can watch um, the people interacting around me and really kind of pull in some new uh, inspiration from things that are going on so and it helps drown out the a hundred other things going on in the middle of my brain yes so that I can actually focus on writing yes. <laughs> and why do you write is it for self-fulfillment to bring pleasure to others and uh, all of the above anything else <laughs> 
I used to think I was fairly crazy in my line of thinking, but the more authors um, I meet, and I network a lot because I host an annual author event in Michigan, and I host other smaller events throughout the year, so I, I do a lot of networking, and something that I've heard a lot of authors say have made me feel a little bit better about how I, I see it. Um, as an author, they're in a, in a bizarre way, my stories, the worlds that I create in my stories, the characters that I create, they're alive in there, in my head, and it, to a degree. And that may sound crazy, but as, as a writer, or even um, even as adamant readers, you know that you embrace these worlds and these and these characters as actually something that you become attached to. And as a writer, when you're creating that world and creating these characters in your head, all you can think of is, I just, I want to get these out to people. I, I, they want to come out and be heard, and the world wants to be seen and built, and the people want people to either hate them or love them, depending on the character, you know? And so, um, in a way, it, it's, it's more or less to get the story out there so other people can enjoy it. But there is that part of you that's just like, you feel like you have this entire world knocking on the inside of your mind going, let me out, let me out. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah. a lot of it. Um, <clears throat> characters are famous for really screwing up a story in their own way. <laughs> yes. I don't think I have a single short story or book that um, ended the way I had originally planned on simply because one of the characters decided to do something different than I thought. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm a, I'm yeah. a planner who... Yeah. Discovery rights or pantses, and my outlines get thrown out all the time, and I have to redo them because I can't write without an outline, but my characters decide oh. how the story goes. I get told that I'm a chaotic writer because I can't outline, and I have several author friends that they outline, and some of them even stick, you know, niche by niche by niche by niche to every aspect and I don't outline I have a notebook that I write notes in and um, and then mark when I've used it and when I and scribble them out when I decide okay that's not going to fit and I just write a story as if I'm transcribing a, a conversation so I'm told it's very chaotic <laughs> if it works for you it works for you there's okay. a there's a wide range of opinion on how much everyday life affects a writer's written work. Everything from people don't want to talk to you because they're afraid you're going to put them in the book to people who really want to talk to you because they want in your book. So how much of everyday life does it affect your writing? Um, everyday life does affect my writing. I can't say that I don't generally do that. I do have a writer friend that will go online and, oh, I have a new character, so which would you want to be that character? Uh, and that's how he does his characters. Um, but I, I, mine's kind of a mix, and I don't ever specifically seek someone. My uh, immersion really derived from, I used to play an online game that was a virtual world, and watching the people get completely sucked in and losing their lives was a real big uh, inspiration for the premise so that, that when in Maui um, I was going through a divorce and my best friend called me and said I have to tell you about this dream that I had and I did not want to hear it and she's like no no no, no you've got to hear it and so she proceeded to tell me this dream and I had been basically under a set of covers on my couch for a week in depression and um, I, I got up after I got off the phone with her and started writing. Like, it just felt like therapeutic to sit and write. And she called me, like, 20 minutes later, and it was just, hey, you should write that into a book. And I said, that's really funny, because I'm on page 11. And <laughs> that dream is the opening sequence for When in Maui. And the two main characters, uh, Carrie is my friend's name. Uh, she's an amazing woman and so funny and so charismatic. And her and I are so different from each other, but she's like my sister, and we love each other dearly. And 
our banter that we get going because we're so different we're both so sarcastic we bounce off each other in ways that people are like you guys should be tv characters you know <laughs> someone should make a show based off of your guys's conversation so as i was writing the book i found myself taking a lot of the elements of mine and carrie's friendships and and the way we banter off each other and um and using that with vivian and alice so so yeah i mean there's a lot of real life that goes into it. I was going through a divorce. Of course, um, Vivian goes through a divorce in, in when in Maui. Uh, and the heartache that I put in there. Now, my ex definitely to this day is adamant that her ex-husband is him. And I keep saying, no, there's enough differences there. But uh, but because I was going through a divorce at the same time I wrote it, he's just adamant, that's me and you painted me in a horrible light. <laughs> Everybody's so sure somebody is them, and you're like, really? (laughs) Yeah, I know. I'm just waiting when immersion comes out to some of the people that I used to speak to in that virtual world coming to me and going, hmm, how was that? It's funny how some people will see a character and think it's them because that's how they see themselves, and you're like, no, that's not you. (laughs) Right, right. Okay, and our, 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 we're coming to our last question. Is there anything else you want to tell the readers or viewers? Ooh, I can probably think of several things. Uh, if writing is your passion, um, go for it, because someone's going to love your story. Not everybody's going to love every story, but somebody will love your story. Um, if you are a reader, read. Uh, and and tell your friends about every book that you love. Um, reading is a f- is is an aspect of life that is underappreciated. And um, books, there's more and more books coming out every day, but less and less bookstores available. So support your local libraries, support your local independent bookstores, and share the knowledge when you find a good book tell everybody. I completely agree. Okay, Colleen, it was very nice to see you and thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. Okay.